Welcome everybody to Friday Night Smackdown here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Oh, what we have scheduled here tonight, we have the match that was supposed to happen last week. Ilya Dragunov versus Mark Coffey, one on one. We also have a women's tag match. The chain of base Zoe Stark versus the way. There we go, couldn't get it out. But first off, we have a promo from Pretty Freaking Deadly. All three members of that unit successful at money in that bank and they're probably here to gloat in our faces and here come the tag part of that unit and more specifically the smackdown tag team champions pretty deadly the pretty deadly part of pretty freaking deadly Ooh. they seem in a very good mood tonight though i'm not surprised that they got to have a title match in the UK and they won. And they probably only recently came back to the States. They're probably still hung over from celebrating. <laughs> but, you know, so luckily they don't have a match scheduled at the minute. <laughs> so, luckily for them, that's probably not doing too bad. Uh, whether <laughs> they're... Whether you can say leader, if he, if he is their leader or not... Or if he's more their strategist was staying with them, I don't know. I'm only speculating here, but they just look in a very good mood and I don't blame them. Especially now we're also moving in to SummerSlam period. Possibly the biggest show excluding WrestleMania. And like uh, and the biggest party of the summer. The biggest event of the summer. I'm sure pretty deadly want to be a part of that. You know, you get all those extra summer modeling contracts that sounds like a thing pretty deadly would be pretty interested in pun intended so definitely a big time of the year for these lot just had money in the bank in england now going to summer slam it's gonna be huge for them so that's probably why they're another, in a, another reason for them being in a good mood anyways like i said here's the duo out here <laughs> so let's bring out the final man of pretty freaking deadly Oh, he's drawn out a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Now he comes. Our WWE Universal Champion. The freaking part of Pretty Freaking Deadly, if you will. He is a visionary. He is a revolutionary. He is an architect. He is a messiah. He's Seth freaking... Rollins yeah, getting dripped out in that his very favourite red robe that he loves to sport <laughs> that's his favourite outfit by the looks <laughs> as he waltzes down to the ring with swagger also successful at money in the bank and leading into money in the bank his wife unsuccessful at money in the bank unfortunately but maybe there's a little bit of a home field advantage there in a weird way for Rollins in like a vicarious way him being part of a, a a trio that has two members from the UK and then a wife from Ireland, so that's UK still. So I feel like Rollins is about as close as you get to a hometown advantage there in the UK without having one. But either way, yeah, so he probably stayed there for Becky more than pretty deadly. But anyways, <laughs> that's Rollins out here. Let's see what they have to say. Oh, I love when a plan comes together. I told... Everybody, that pretty freaking deadly would be the best trio in all of WWE and it proves how dominant we are now as a unit and nobody can stop us. Oh, out comes SmackDown GM, Teddy Long. I wonder what he has to say about these comments. You know, I'm glad we're on the same wavelength, fellas, because I'm thinking... At SummerSlam, Pretty Deadly will be in a four-way tornado tag ladder match for those SmackDown tag team titles. And Rollins, as a man that specifically wants you pretty badly, he's been banging out my door a lot, so I feel like I should give it to him. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> Rollins messed up. Though, I can understand why he's, um, why he's mad. Yeah, we haven't seen him since. Uh, situation with Rollins so clearly he's got something on his mind and he has not let it go oh Rollins is not in for a good one let's hear what this man has to say shall we 
Give him a microphone. You think I've forgotten about you, Rollins? After that roll of victory over me in the tournament? No, no. I'm gonna get you back for that. And I want that title in return. Ha? Huh? You wanna fight, big dog? Well, come on then, get your ass in the ring. <laughs> you must be some kind of idiot. I'm not fighting you tonight. But you can face Jimmy in the main event, though. Oh, that's big news. Seth freaking Rollins versus Jimmy Uso, main event tonight. Okay, anyway, let's get to one of our scheduled matches that Teddy Long scheduled at the start of the night. <laughs> but no, that's huge news. Not only have we now found out the main event, we also know what's happening at SummerSlam with the SmackDown Tag Team titles. And we're yet to figure out who is going into them. And I'm getting something in my ear. We're going to find out one of them tonight. One of the two tag team... Uh, like, t well, one of the teams that are going to get into the match. Uh, and... In the following two weeks, we'll find out the remaining two. So that's going to be cool. I'm, I'm excited to see who Teddy's got planned for this. These six tag teams that are going to get this opportunity to wrestle at SummerSlam in this ladder match. It's going to be insane. But I'm looking forward to it, that's for sure. That is indeed for sure. But here you're dragging off. Now... He wanted this match because he felt that he owed it to the fans. <laughs> that he didn't have this match with Mark Coffey last week. And we know Ilya is the workhorse of the WWE right now. Most amount of matches ever. Most amount of con consecutive matches. And he's, and he's adding another match tonight. And maybe even starting up that consecutive streak again. After wrestling at Money in the Bank. Now wrestling on SmackDown again. Question is, how long will that chain wrestle for again? Who knows? But he is the workhorse of WWE right now. That is something that cannot be taken away from him. The only thing that's things being taken away from him is the energy and any shred of feeling good in the body because he's got to be in a bit of pain. He's got to be sore, that's for sure. Anyways, let's bring out Ilya Dragunov's opponent, who I'm sure... Has some backup, which is going to pay Dragunov a bit of issues tonight. And that, I imagine, comes in the way of the Gallus boys. There you are. The man wrestling tonight on the very left, Mark Coffey. The man that challenged Joey Dragunov at Money in the Bank in the middle, Joe Coffey. And Wolfgang is on the left now. Now he's on the right. There you go. And camera work and that. <laughs> Anyways, walls and down to the ring with Swagger. <laughs> it's a shame for Joe Coffey. He was unsuccessful in the UK. That would have been amazing for him if he could have won that, but unsuccessful. But we've seen who he's in the ring, who he was going to go in the ring with. It was never going to be an easy one, that's for sure. <laughs> but the question is, can Mark Coffey get a win here tonight against Elio Dragon? If he does, that could definitely give him a consideration for a title shot. Especially, like, SummerSlam coming around the corner. That would be huge for Mark Coffey to get there. But, question is, will he get there? He's got to be able to win this match. And that's going to be no easy feat, no matter how battered the Ilya Dragunov is. So, without further ado, without anything else left to be said, <laughs> Ilya Dragunov looking ready. Mark Coffey looking ready, but... Truthfully, is he really ready for Ilya Dragunov? Let's find out. No oh, coffee. Not taking any of that. Oh, Dragunov. Firing. Oh, close lines. Mark Coffee down. Oh, no. Just helping him up. And then a double axe handle to the back. That's not really helping him, is it? Dragunov the end of Giri. Oh, picking up Mark Coffee now. Oh, the schoolboy! Sit up, power on to Mark Coffey by Dragunov now. He's picking him up. And an Enziguri again. Here we are picking him up. Oh, the faint out DDT. And now Mark Coffey's getting back up though. And Dragunov boots him down. I think Mark Coffey kind of shook his head into it a little bit there. But Dragunov all fired up now. Oh, kick to the shin. Mark Coffey stays standing, though. And now the chops. Oh. Coffey now on the advantage now. Oh, but not for very long. Ilya Dragunov fires the elbow back and a clothesline. 
Dragunov very much controlling this match so far and a sent on now to Mark Coffey. I was going to say, there's one thing that Ilya Dragunov is not. It is rusty. He's been a well-oiled machine at the minute, that is for sure. Mark Coffey now trying to take advantage. No, Dragunov counters and the strikes the face. Oh, bounce off the ropes and another boot to Mark Coffey. Dragunov all fired up, getting the crowd behind him. Dragunov gone into the cover. One, two, not even two there. I don't believe at least. Dragunov now knee drop on Mark Coffey's head. Oh, going for the roll up now. One. Oh, Coffey, maybe that might be able to bring it back into the match. Oh, and an uppercut. I think it has Mark Coffey now. Just trying to get that damage in, trying to wear down Ilya, trying to slow him down, at least momentarily. What's he looking for now? Some pump handle. Oh, but Dragunov slips down behind. Straight to the back now. Oh, Dragunov looking for a power bomb to Mark Coffey there. Going for a cover. One, two, kick out by Mark Coffey. Ilya now. Oh, I think... He's looking for the Torpedo Moscow to Mark Coffey there. Looking for a cover. Joe, I think he's going to get some attention, but a crowd maybe, remember. I don't know. Mark Coffey, though, kicks out of the Torpedo Moscow. I think Dragon I've noticed, but he wasn't going to break up the pin. Now he's having an argument with Joe Coffey. Maybe the wrong time as Mark Coffey is getting up. Oh, and a chop block to Dragon of now. And an elbow drop now. That might have been giving the Mark, Mark Coffey the opening he needs to secure this win. Oh, but Dragunov chucks him to the outside. Dragunov going to the top rope now. He wants Mark to get up. Crossbody. Takes down Mark. But that will look like an ugly landing for Dragunov. But he's still fine. So maybe it's not too bad. I don't know yet. I'm no doctor. Dragunov. Sending Mark Coffey into the barricade now. Oh, Coffey, Cowers. No, they're all kind of missing a little bit here. Dolph fades out. DDT on the floor. Making Coffey look like an idiot while also dealing incredible damage. Mark Coffey, though, fighting back. Looking to send him into the barricade now. Oh, and now just pounding away an eight count by the referee. Mark Coffey turns around and gets into the ring. Dragunov's getting back to his feet though. Oh, Mark Coffey. Just Galish aside, swarming Dragunov. When that 10 count was about to get out as Dragunov tried to get back in. They wanted no chance that Dragunov would make it back in. I don't know. Either way, Mark Coffey now. Maybe it was a bit more of a surprise. Like, I don't know. I don't know Galish's plan. And now Dragunov just been dropped on top of that announce table there. Mark now picking him up. Send Dragunov into the ring. Counter seven. Not too bad. Looking now for a suplex. Oh, there's a chair in the ring. What's that chair doing in the ring for? I think Mark's going to have an argument with the referee. Uh, I think it's cost him. Dragunov. Looking to capitalize. Oh, and another kick. And another stomp. Oh, yeah, again. Dragunov having an argument with Joe Coffey. I think Mark Coffey needs a breather. He's not looking too good. Maybe that stomp maybe did a lot more damage than before. Maybe Dragunov hit him pretty hard in one spot. Probably just the wear and tear of the match, though. Mark now getting to his feet with Dragunov. Finished with his argument. Dragunov now. Sending him. Oh, Torpedo Moscow, but Mark Coffey. Get out of the way. Oh, what a move. To Dragunov there. Not like a choke slam. Two. Kick out by Dragunov. I think Mark is looking to finish it. The Snapman now putting Ilya into position for that forearm elbow to Dragunov, knocking him out, surely. Looking for a cover one. Wait, what? Dragunov kicking out a one, not even a two count on there. Mark's going back straight for it. As Dragunov is getting back to his feet. Yeah, again. Mark Coffey setting him into position. Yet again, looking for another to Dragunov. That's got to be it, surely. Robinson going for the cover. Two. Kick out by Dragunov. 
How is Dragunov staying standing? Mark is beside himself. He's just thrown two of his best shots and Dragunov stayed in the match. He's already countered. Oh no, little bit of a stutter there. I think Ilya's feeling the wear and tear of that move. Feeling a little dazed maybe. So maybe just Mark needs it one more and it'll be over. Ilya, setting him up. Stomped to the chest now, using the rope as an assistance. Just getting that extra height, that extra elevation, to get that extra pressure and weight over the chest of Mark Coffey. Not what he needs. That's what you breathe, that's what your lungs are. Oh, dodges the insecurity, does Mark Coffey. Oh no, here you counters though. Oh, looking for that clothesline. Takes down Mark Coffey, but Ilya having issues with Wolfgang there as he's exposed the turnbuckle. Ilya drops down. Oh, but now he's met by Joe Coffey and sends him back in. Oh, and Joe Coffey's rolled into the middle of the ring. But I don't know why, but Dragonov is striking away at him. Oh, maybe a bit of a distraction that maybe put himself in the way for Mark Coffey. So he, now Mark Coffey is on the advantage. Put his body on the line. Oh, knee drop. Ilya, no, strike. Charles Armstrong's getting rid of Joe. I'm not surprised he's been in the ring, but maybe that's clearly what Mark Coffey needed. Mark Coffey on the advantage now as they're both to the outside. Mark Coffey chased Ilya out there. Mark sends Ilya into the ring. Ilya feeling the effects of this match. His head's not doing too good after those elbows. Oh, elbow drop, coward. Knee smash, what a knee smash to Mark Coffey now. And Dragunov looking for another torpedo. Moscow. Oh, I think I saw some blood fly there too. Oh, Ilya not looking like he's done yet. Picks him up. Mark Coffey on the shoulders of Dragunov. Power bomb. But no, Wolfgang having an argument with Dragunov. Maybe just trying to give Mark Coffey that last chance. Just latch this effort to win this match. Ilya, Mark Coffey's barely moving. Oh, now he is, but so is Ilya. Ilya turns around now and now notices Coffey back to his feet and another torpedo Moscow. To Mark Coffey there, looking for a give One, two, three. Ilya Dragunov puts that issue to rest. That blemish that he probably saw on his record as not having that match. That has been painted over now with that victory for Ilya Dragunov and he can probably put Gallus behind him now after he's defeated all three members. Joe Coffey did say if he wanted to prove he's tough he had to go through the Gallus boys. Ilya Dragunov has gone through all three. Still your United States champion. Still doing great. What a win for Ilya Dragunov. What's next for him? I wonder. Anyways, the women's tag match that we were told about. Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark versus Canada Slow Ray and Indy Hartwell. The last women's tag team on SmackDown that Shayna and Zoe have not faced yet. So this is going to be interesting. After this match, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark will have officially beaten everybody on SmackDown for women's tag team. So SmackDown might have to like start coming up with like new teams. We have to just start whacking women together maybe. Or like women coming together that aren't necessarily doing a lot. In the women's title scene. But we know about those battle royals at SummerSlam. And of course we just had money in the bank. So I feel like a lot of people are feeling like they can do it on their own at the minute. So maybe not a best time for it. But either way. Shayna Baszler waltzing down to the ring. Ready for a fight. If I'm not mistaken. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark both undefeated in universe mode. Have not lost yet if I'm not mistaken. Because I don't believe Evil Woman's had a singles match yet. Oh, wait, right, no. Shayna Baszler has had single matches. And she's won every single one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Though I could be a little wrong. But I don't believe I am. Anyways, Shayna Baszler. That is one half of the women's tag team champions. Here comes the second. The more... Inexperience of the two, kind of the one that Shayna Baszler has brought under her shoulder, and what it has, it's done incredibleness for her as she is a very now dominant women's tag team champion. <laughs> it's Zoe Stark. You know, this is doing major for Zoe Stark. Just not long being on the main roster, and she's already been at every pay per view of Universe Mode so far. Just related to this women's tag team title, 
like rain. It's been good, going good for these two women. And they're looking for more success here tonight. Looking for more dominance as they take on the final team that they have not taken on and smacked down. So Teddy Long might have to start thinking of some other things. So I think, <laughs> I don't know, maybe we might have to hand it over to Regal. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> do Regal and Teddy decide? Do Shane and Bezos, so we start to decide? Do they have like a board meeting between the four of them? I don't know. But like I said, outcome. The way, <laughs> as they call themselves, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. This could be huge for these two, obviously. Title not on the line in this match, but if Candice and Indy can win this, then that could give them that title opportunity. Like I said, with Ilya Dragunov versus Mark Coffey, SummerSlam, round the corner, getting a win over champions and, and giving that kind of, you beat a champion, you get a shot of their title, type mentality and type situation. That's a good thing at any time, but especially around the SummerSlam season, that's for sure. So, Mark Coffey was unsuccessful, though, tonight. Can the way be successful and be the first ones to defeat Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark? I'm interested to find out. And all like you lot should be. Though, we did last time we saw these two, they lost. So, maybe it's not doing too good. And they lost to the win people that lost to Shayna and Zoe at Money in the Bank. But sometimes, some people are better at fighting other people but than the people that, like... Maybe I will go with this example. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. You know, like they might be dominant against most people. Just like their opponents at Money in the Bank in Tegan Ox and Natalia. Maybe Tegan Ox and Natalia could be better than Candice and Indy. But because maybe they have their number and it's their kind of fighting style. But maybe Candice and Indy are better at fighting the style of Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. So it's still all to play for, is my point. If you get where I'm coming across. And, you know, on any given night, anything can happen here in the WWE. It's why we say it so much. So, for all we know, Gannis and Indy could get away with a win. Sometimes it's just about making one mistake, one second, one night, and the opponent noticing and capitalizing in the right kind of way. No matter who the team is. No matter who the superstar is. So, do not count out Indy Harwell and Gannis LeRae. That is for sure. Indy sends Shayna into the corner. And now looking for a body slam to Shayna. Middle rope. Shayna crawling. Very slowly. To Zoe Starks. Tags her in. Indy wants Zoe. Bit of history between these two women and Zoe Starks just kicks her face off. And now a moonsault. That's, that's not quite where Indy wanted, I think. That's not why the way she envisioned it. As though he's stark just now taking it to Indy Hartwell now. Oh, but Indy kicks her back down. And now a kick to the back to Zoe Stark. And another kick to the back. And a third kick to the back. But Zoe back to her feet. Oh, double axe handle though. Indy blocks it. And now goal oh, Candice Roy dodging all those attacks there. See? It, on any given night. <laughs> Candice just dodged all of Zoe's attacks. Is Indy was just dominating Zoe for a little bit there. Goes to the cover, did Candice. And she just blocked a huge double axe handle too, did Indy. So, my point is being proven possibly here tonight. Candice Ray now sends Zoe Starks into the ropes. Zoe Starks. Oh, maybe that might be the end of the run for the way. Zoe Starks with that forearm. Oh, now just drops Candice on her head. Jeez. That's a mother for crying out loud. Gotta be careful. <laughs> She's got a kid at home. There's always Starks in the moon zone now. Now to the second rope. Well, the middle rope. He drop. I'm going to say that's a, that's a question. Uh, her husband, Johnny Gargano, is in a tag team. Could we be seeing him in one of those six teams? Who knows? Anyways, well, Teddy Long probably knows. Oh, Candice just makes it in the heart well in time. Oh, Zoe Starks just boots her face off. And again. He's just a dominant of Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Oh, maybe I misspoke. Indy Hartwell. Now looking for that Amalok DDT to Zoe Stark. It's going for the cover, but Shayna Baszler instantly in. 
just stomping on the face of Indy Hartwell. Not even a one count there because of her. You know, Indy Hartwell, neck breaker to Shayna. Shayna smartly rolls out the ring. Zoe seated herself in the corner. Oh, Shayna now going at Candice LeRae as Zoe's kicked off. Indy Hartwell in the boot to the face now. So we start Shayna Baszler back in control, firmly yet again. And a boot to the face again. I think Shayna's letting Zoe have this one. I don't know. Shayna and Candice fighting out there. Oh, Candice with a jawbreaker. And Zoe now a boot to the face. Stomping away. As Indy rolls to the outside now. There everybody's on the outside now. Zoe Starks. Double axe handle off the apron. And now another moonsault. So he's definitely showing off the effectiveness of those boots and those moonsaults here tonight, that's for sure. Sends her back into the ring. So he's stuck. Enziguri takes down Hartwell. She just collapses after that. And now Zoe just wrenching the ankle. Oh, there's Shayna. I think she's fin finished dealing out with Candice LeRae there. Zoe picks her up in a super kick to the face. To Indy Hartwell. Oh, and another super kick. Jeez. Oh, Indy, I think he tried to roll to Candice. Unsuccessful. And another super kick by Zoe Stark. Candice just trying and begging Indy Hartwell to try and get there in time. A kick to the knee now. And that knee smash. King of the knees, I tell you, this team. Should be their name. And they don't quite have one at the minute. <laughs> Maybe it should be King of the Knees. And talking of knees. So he's looking to end it with. The Z360 to Indy Hartwell. Looking for the cover. One, two, three. Baszler and Stark with the win. And that's it. They defeat every team on SmackDown. In what, the space of, what, two months? It's domination, that's for sure. Now oh, hold on, Zoe Stark, Shayna Baszler, they're both grabbing microphones, something to say obviously. We have torn through the Smackdown Tag Team Division for the women. It's about time we see what Raw has to offer. At SummerSlam, we want Raw's best, so they better bring it. Oh, okay. That's great to hear. Anyways, obviously we know what's main event, so we know what now is. Oh, okay. This this reveals one of the two teams that we that that will be in this match. Of course, this is Axiom, and I have a feeling I know who he's coming along with. One half of the Supersonic Duo. Oh, this will be an exciting match, that's for sure. Because this team is very fast. There's a reason why they call Supersonic Duo, but also very athletic. Very exciting to watch. So, this will definitely be a fun one. I'm looking forward to it. That's for sure. Well, this is Big Facts, him and Nathan Frazier. Obviously, that's the other mem member of Supersonic Duo. Because this will be their first pay-per-view on the main roster. That will be huge for them. If we're talking SummerSlam, too. Like one of the big ones. That's huge. Anyway, like I said, kind of spoiled it a little bit, but... I kind of already hinted at it with the Supersonic Duo. Of course. The team that never slows down. <laughs> the man that is possibly the fastest man in WWE. Maybe being out Bron Breaker though. Maybe they can have a sprint race one day. Maybe. But they're both on separate brands for now. But it is Nathan Frazier. Yeah. Great to see him. Wrestling here too on SmackDown as he darts right to the ring with that absolute speed. As he's looking to impress us here tonight, and I'd expect nothing less from this team. See, just that athleticism and the speed. Whew. All right, well, we know what this team. Is so what could be the other possible team taking on pretty deadly in that four-way tornado tag at SummerSlam? Let's find out, shall we? Who's it gonna be? Oh, okay. I kind of mentioned him earlier on tonight. 
as his wife was competing in that uh, two on two women's tag match. It is Johnny Gargano alongside his good old pal Tommaso Ciampa, not to be confused with Shawn Michaels and Tommaso Ciampa. Sorry, Shawn Michaels and Triple H. I'm getting confused now. <laughs> it is DIY, not to be confused with DX. <laughs> Obviously, you get the point. Chumba and Triple H are very lookalikes. And same with Gargano and Shawn Michaels. I don't think I've met two people that look similar, to be honest. Like, more similar, sorry. So, anyways. <laughs> this DIY, that's as huge for these two teams. Uh, like, th these two are veterans of NXT, so. That'd be cool to see. We saw these two take on Pretty Deadly in a TLC tag. At Night Champion, so seeing them in this ladder match at SummerSlam is going to be interesting. But these two, these four teams, sorry, look ready. Charles Robinson rings the bell and an axiom with the forearms, the face of Tommaso Ciampa there, the moonsault. Sorry, shooting star press, my apologies. Oh, and a springboard cross body just rotating in midair, I think there. Ciampa though kicks him back down. Oh no, axiom counter was the kick to the gut. Dana shooting star press. And a moonsault now. There we go. That's a moonsault. Oh, drop kick. We know Gargano counters. Gargano looking too kindly to that. And then Enziguri takes him down. Axiom being very impressive so far. And another crossbody there to Champa. And now tags in his team partner in Nathan Frazier. Oh, no. Nathan dodges and a super kick to the face of Champa. Elbow drop there. Bounce off the ropes. Nathan Frazier. Sizing up Champa. Bounce off a different set of ropes this time. And then a kick to their head. Jeez, okay. Nathan Frazier bounce off the ropes. And an elbow drops the back of the head to Champa. Oh, I think Champa's feeling the effects of that one. That must have hurt. Got to be careful with those elbows to the back of the head, that's for sure. Nathan Frazier to the top rope now, though. Looking for some big. Oh, a swan time to a stand in to Master Champa. What a move, I know. Oh, oh, and another elbow to the back. Champa's feeling his pecs, so I think that's from that swanton. Oh, we're now getting kicked in that place. And now we're shooting star press. Oh, and a second of a Champa. He's, he's had like four done to him already in this match, so he saw that coming. Nathan Frazier, the strike to the gut. No, chop, count, like dodged, sorry, by Champa. And now a slam down. By Champa slowing down Nathan Frazier. Tags in Gargano now, but May Frazier kicks back to his feet. Every man's now been in the ring. Gargano a kick to the face. Oh, sorry, kick to the gut now. And looking for a bit of sliced bread to Nathan Fraser. Oh, how about drop now to the back? Looks into tag in. Tommaso Ciampa. Ciampa's all fired up. And a neck breaker. I'm going to say Fraser might be fast, but... Champa is very calculated. He's very meticulous. Oh, no. Fraser counters. Sends Champa into the corner there. Gets him to the top rope now. Oh, Champa kicks him out. Dragging him now. But no. Fraser counter him. What's he looking to do here then? Oh, kick. Oh, Champa brought him down. Champa's doing very well to counter this speed by Nathan Fraser. Tags in Gargano now. It's been a while since Axiom has been in the match. Oh, drop kick to the knee. And now Fraser not taking too kindly to that. Oh, looking for a superplex to the outside. What a move to Gargano there. Fraser feeling the effects though, I'm not surprised. He's still falling off, like, to the floor. Onto that hard floor on the outside there, so I'm not surprised. Anyways, Fraser sends Gargano back into the ring. Gargano getting back to his feet. Oh, look for a drop kick. Just sends Gargano flying. And Fraser tags in Axi, and there we go. He needed that break. Oh, DDT by Gargano there. What's Gargano looking for here? Sends Axi into the ropes. Drops down. Jumps over. Dole calf kick countered by Axiom. Dole on a super kick there. Elbow drop now. 
Axiom. Looking for... Oh! What a slam down. He's looking into the locker submission now. Will Gargano tap? Oh no, Gargano rolling away. No, trying to alleviate the pressure. There we go. Gargano, a very resilient man, that is for sure. Gargano now. Oh, Axiom, the forearm back down. Gargano trying to get... Oh! I think Axiom ran in between them. The speed shown off there by Axiom. He got a knee to a face, but... Oh, well, golden ratio to Gargano there. Looking for the cover. Gargano, sorry, Champ again into the ring. Breaks up the cover, though. Axiom. Elbow drop now. Jeez, what an elbow drop. That looks like brutal there. Oh, it is. Gargano bleeding there. Doll, elbow by Gargano. Axiom firing out of it though. Super Sonic do proving very good tonight, being very quick on their feet. Living up to the name. Tags in Fraser now. They've, they've clearly got a lot to prove. Doll. Fraser accidentally hits the referee. It's bit, I think he just knows and called the, the, the tag just in time. As Jump of the one now illegal. Sorry, now legal. Fraser. Oh no, the ref's doing alright now. Gargano's doing alright now. So now it's Fraser versus Champa. I believe we've had every combination as well. We that ended with Axiom versus Gargano. Fraser looking all fired up. Going up to the middle rope. Was he looking for it? Oh, a double axe handle to the face of Champa. Oh, that's not looking good. He's not in a good position there. Like, he looks in pain there. Frog splash to Champa. Looking for the cover. One, two. Kick out by Tommaso Champa. Oh, actually trying to get rid of Gargano. Does no. Ch Gargano. Oh, Fraser. Lot of stuff happening there. Oh, and Champa again. The clothesline taking advantage of the situation there. Champa sends him into the corner. Oh, Fraser fires the elbow. Oh, ducks the clothesline. Oh no, looking for that snap suplex to Fraser. Stomping away now on the chest. Looking for the cover on Fraser. One kick out by Nathan. I was going to say, Axiom and Nathan doing a great job in this match. Keeping them all to them. Don't get me wrong, DIY have tried, but the speed just proving too much for them at this point. But they're showing the toughness that I expect from DIY. I would say there's not a more tougher, more resilient team in all of WWE right now than DIY. You've got the kind of sick and twisted side of Tommaso Ciampa and then just the the heart of Johnny Gargano. No, no, for Fraser. Oh, looking for something big here. Looking for that. Superplex, but this time off the top. Rope and to Tommaso Ciampa, but hangs on. And out. Oh, brings down Ciampa. Oh. Sends away Gargano there. But no, the madman. Champa's back to his feet after that. And Champa's flying away. But no, he's just holding on and Fraser's arm now. And now in a drop kick to the knee. How is Champa still just moving? He just got up so simply. And now Champa. Oh, torture rack bomb to Fraser. This is unhuman. I told you. Sick and twisted Champa. How's he just gotten up from that? Goal. Bouncing his face off the turbo. And now repeating it. Doing it. And again. And again. And again. Albert Fraser. Counters this time. And sends Champer in one. Uh, to a bit of a receipt there. But Champer fires back the elbow. Oh no. Don't want to discuss for him now. Champer. Now looking to just slam Fraser down on his face. The Champa, I think he's worn out a little bit there. Maybe that kind of adrenaline he had earlier is worn out on him. Cover two. Kick out by Fraser. Champa just wouldn't himself back to his feet there. Champa now. Chops. Kicks. Elbows. Just firing all these strikes. Oh, Fraser. No, Axiom. I don't know. No, not Axiom. Axiom's in the corner. Axiom hasn't been tagged in in a while yet again. 
Fraser seeming to hold a bit more of the tag situation there. Oh, but no, Champa just gets a tag on Gargano in time. Oh, Gargano gets the kick to the gut now. Striking away now. Oh, the kicks, all oh, the combos. Just dropping Fraser on his face there. Oh, into the corner he goes. And now a body slam to Nathan Frazier there. Going for the cover. Looking for a one, a two. Kick out by Fraser. From Nathan Frazier staying alive in this match. But Fraser just trying to win his way over to Axiom. But Gargano, Champa keeping on top of him. Yet to hit a big move in this match. Which I think is really not doing them any good. Fraser, oh, gets that flying. Just attack out there. He's hopped over the, the ropes. Looking for a big springboard drop kick. Sends Gargano. But Gargano to the outside. Oh, with Fraser. But no, Gargano sidesteps there. And Fraser feeling the effects. But no, Fraser kicks him back down. This man is not slowing down. And now he has as he tagged in Axiom. <laughs> but maybe he's transferring over the speed to Gargano. Fraser getting a little excited there. Oh, kicks his gut. No. Countered by Gargano. Axiom firing off the elbows. Oh, ducks. No. Gargano with the clothesline. Gargano now. Oh, no. Fraser saying no to that. The hot shot, Axiom gets back into the ring. Chop block to Gargano now. Gargano, slow, just making his way back to his feet. I told you, this team is resilient. Oh, and a forearm now by Axiom. Dono Gargano counters, sends him into the corner now. Oh, now looking for an SDO buckle smash there. To Axiom as he's just rolling around in pain there. Champa tagged in. Oh no. Champa dodged it. Took out Gargano instead. Champa. No Axiom counters. Ducks the clothesline. Oh, and a German suplex. Hey, what? These tag matches always go on forever, don't they? Jeez. Axiom now. Looking for. Yet again, dropping Champa on his face. Oh no, it was Gargano last time. Now looking to lock in the submission on Champa. Will Champa tap out? I don't know. Let's find out. Gargano nowhere to be seen. Oh, here he is now. Breaks it up. Oh, Gargano dodges the forearm. Dodges the enziguri. Oh, Axiom gets that strike now. Oh, and a hot shot. Oh, Champa's looking a little groggy. So Axiom's going to take care of him there. Tope suicide, suicide dive, whatever you want to call it. Axiom now. Sending Tommaso Ciampa back into the ring. Axiom now. Looking for that golden ratio. Kick to the face of Ciampa. Blood flying everywhere. Looking for the cover. One, two. What? Ciampa kicking out. How? How? This team's too resilient. Yet again, Axiom just sizing up Ciampa again. Look at that blood on the forehead of Champa. Yeah, again, another golden ratio. Takes down Gargano now. That's got to be it. Surely, surely. How much can they put through? Two, three. Supersonic duo with the win. I'll tell you what, Champa and Gargano, they didn't get a big move, any, too many big moves in there, but they put up a fight, that was for sure. And I mean being resilient too. That's on the exclamation marks and in bold there and underlined they were resilient it's still mad that Champ just got up from that superplex and like final cut spinning brain buster whatever you want to call it but that's huge for Supersonic Duo they are the first teams that we know of to take on pretty deadly in that four way tornado ladder match at SummerSlam that's huge but without further ado we have a promo from Miss Money in the Bank out she comes now with that briefcase. <laughs> Definitely adding to that daddy literal rich girls moniker now walking around with the money in the bank briefcase. <laughs> it doesn't get any richer than that nearly in WWE. The only thing that's higher than that is the title itself. And that's what Tiffany's looking for with that briefcase, that is for sure. Question is who will she cash it in on? Will she cash in on the women's champion? Rhea Ripley, or will she 
get cash in on, on the world women's champion in Bailey. But she's already got Ronda Rousey on her hand, so that's a tough opponent. But anyways, let's hear what Tiffany has to say, shall we? Everybody, it's officially Tiffy time, as I am now your Miss Money in the Bank. And you better darn respect it. And I can go after any woman I want, whether it's Rhea Ripley or Bailey. And I'm not going to tell you who, but let's face it, everybody's going to be thinking about Tiffany Stratton now as rightly so, being the centre of the universe. Oh, looks like somebody's got an issue with what Tiffany has to say. Or maybe she's got an issue with her voice. I've heard that's a thing. <laughs> Some people aren't a fan of Tiffany Stratton. And clearly, somebody that's not a very big fan of Tiffany Stratton, and somebody that didn't quite get what they wanted, and money in the bank, that would have been huge for, Sorry for Becky, if she won that briefcase in the UK. Uh, I mean, her husband was successful that night. Her husband's, like, new tag team, like, friends. <laughs> was successful that night, but Becky Lynch, not successful that night. Which is just a shame for her, but it's how it goes in the WWE sometimes. You win some, you lose some. You win some big ones, you lose some big ones. Big time Bex knows that very well, I'm sure, but it doesn't make it any easier. Um, I, I, you don't need to be a psychologist to know that. Anyways, let's hear what Becky has to say and retort to Tiffany. What are you doing out here, you loser? Can't you see it's Tiffy time right now? Shut up, you dope. I seem to remember very clearly that you got lucky at Money in the Bank. Everyone was on their feet by the time you had the briefcase in your hands. You only won it by a few milliseconds. And I seem to remember having spot of the night manhandle slamming you off the ladder. And I had all my friends and family in attendance here and I disappointed them. I can't do that again. Oh, Becky feels like a disappointment to her family. I'm surprised they're not already used to it. I'm warning you, don't mention my family again. Or you'll do what, Becky? Do what? Oh, Becky just froze the microphone, jeez. And now Becky Low looking for a panhandle slam. I guess that's what happens when you mention uh, Becky Lynch's family. Anyways, Rollins versus Jimmy Uso, main event. <laughs> We've just seen one half of that happy couple, now the other half of that happy couple, but coming out first. Not the member of the happy couple. <laughs> it is a member of the bloodline. Down since day one-ish. Uh, Jimmy Uso being accompanied by the wise man, Paul Heyman. Uh, feel like Jimmy Uso's gonna be in a bit of a lamb to the slaughter here a little bit. He's dealing with Seth Rollins, who's on a hell of a thing, and he's probably just been fired up from Becky Lynch backstage, to be honest. <laughs> and he's probably not too happy with Tiffany Strand, so he's probably not in the best of moods. So, and especially when he was just expecting Roman Reigns, and he's not getting him, and now pretty deadly knowing about that four-way tornado attack. It's not looking good in Rollins' day-to-day. So, probably not in the best of mood, so that's not going to do well for Jimmy Uso here tonight. Uh, but either way, let's bring out our champion, shall we? Our universal champion, that is, of SmackDown, because I am a commentator for both, so I don't technically have a brand. <laughs> I am both, and I am pay-per-views. I am the overseeing commentator. <laughs> and the best damn commentator in the business. Don't let anybody ever tell you any otherwise. I had the awards to prove it, but uh, I can't show you for uh, legality reasons. Anyways, Seth Rollins, uh, out he comes, dancing to people, singing his song. Sporting that universal championship, of course. Doing a great job. Obviously, he had it at a pay-per-view late than everybody else did that, uh, for inaugural champions are concerned, at least anyways, as he did lose, he did draw with Finn Balor at Backlash. Oh, wait, hold on. He's derobed, and now Solo Sokoa just attacking Seth Rollins. Uh, don't mind me what I was just saying. Rollins just been attacked by Solo Sokoa. This is clearly Roman's plan. Obviously, there's John Cohn, as I, uh, as... Uh, Charles Robinson had a, a family emergency. Luckily, John Cohn's here too, just in case. So now John Cohn ringing that bell. Jimmy Uso now. Oh, taking down Seth Rollins. 
Uh, this is definitely not going to add to Seth Rollins' mental. That's for sure. And now Jimmy just firing a forearm at Rollins. Oh. Uh, just attacking Seth Rollins out. Yeah, this is definitely Roman Reigns' plan all along. Of course, what they were all referring to at, that thing was Rollins beat Roman Reigns via a roll-up. <laughs> and that's how he got advanced. And I believe it was in the main event of SmackDown. It was the match that gave Rollins the match at Backlash, if I'm not mistaken. They gave him that match against Finn Balor. That was huge, and it ended up being a draw, which is kind of interesting why I mentioned it, and I mentioned it kind of in the wrong order. But it's fine. Jimmy Uso now acknowledging Roman Reigns. As he's just taking it to Seth Rollins right now, taking advantage of Solo Sokoa's distraction. And not just distraction, but just a brutal attack on Seth Rollins. Look at the man. He, 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 the match barely started. He's already just laid out after he's just been bashed into the steps. Oh, but no, Rollins maybe playing possum there. It wouldn't surprise me. And a knee drop to Jimmy Uso. Rollins been brought back into this match. Rollins. Now just chucking Jimmy Uso into the ring. Now looking for that knee strike. Oh, but takes out John Cohn though. And Rollins checking on him. But oh no, comes back around for Jimmy Uso on a knee to the back. Rollins expects nothing different. Oh, Rollins just chucking the chair at Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's had to duck there. But this time taking advantage now is Jimmy Uso. And now getting that tequila sunrise. But Rollins rolls out of it quickly. Maybe found a nice little escape hatch there. And an e-strike to Jimmy Uso. But I suppose it's one of those things. The shorter you're in it, the easier it is to get out of it. You take a chance to get a bunch of energy just to push out of it straight away. You don't have to last in it and feel that pain. Anyways, Rollins. Oh no, Jimmy. I was about to say. Uh, oh no, Rollins dodged. Bit of a back and forth here. Oh, Rollins catches him into a cross race now. Will Jimmy tap? Will Jimmy tap? No, Jimmy breaks out of it. Interesting. Some submissions back come back to forth there. And now Jimmy gets that kick and an uppercut there. And now Jimmy to the top rope there. Rollins in perfect position. Oh, Rollins again. Oh, Rollins sent onto the back of Seth Rollins. We know it's well documented how bad Rollins' back is. But Rollins kicks out though. Jeez. That's not going to be doing good for Rollins. Oh, Becky Lynch is watching back. Stay down another super kick. A double super kick there to Jimmy. By Jimmy Uso to Seth Rollins. Sorry. Looking for the cover on Rollins. One, two, kick out by Rollins. Jimmy getting frustrated now. He's, he's heading to the top now. I think now he's looking for that Uso splash. But no, Rollins gets out of the way. He's asking for Jimmy to bring it. Jimmy is going to bring it. But no, Rollins cowers, slaps it, kicks the gut. Second kick to the gut. And now looking for the curb storm to Jimmy Uso. One, two, kick out by Jimmy Uso. Oh, hold on, I'm getting some news backstage. Whoa, Elton Prince, Solo Sokoa, Kit Wilson. Having a bit of brawl, maybe they saw what happened to Seth Rollins. And they're trying to get a bit of payback here. Got a go match going on, we got a brawl going backstage. Uh, we <laughs> Just all out pandemonia here. Day Long needs to get this show under control. Oh, what a boo to the face of Sokoa. Jeez. Oh, and now that bear hug spine buster to Sokoa. That's not doing good. I know Elton Prince now just getting that table. This does not bode well for Sokoa. It's Kit Wilson now just attacking Sokoa. Just staring him down. So does Sokoa hasn't moved. That's not good. Well, if he had to get that bear hug spine buster to the floor, that he could get a concussion from that if he was, uh, like if he's not careful enough or whatever. But Solo's fine out of it. Maybe a little bit fire left in him, but Elton Prince, no. Solo Sokoa fine off Elton Prince now. Oh, Kit Wilson just smashed his face off that table. Oh, but Solo, yeah, again, fighting. Oh, on a forearm. Table collapses, though. I don't think it quite broke Solo Sokoa's fall a bit. Oh, and a chair just to the face now of Solo Sokoa there. Just stunning Sokoa there. You look at it. He's looking dazed. That's not good. This is not what Roman Reigns was planning, I'm sure. And where is Roman Reigns? Probably cowering in his locker room somewhere. Oh, Elton Prince. He's, ex he's expecting it. He knows what's coming. Kier Wilson now. Looking for a suplex. Oh, no. Solo. Ducks from behind. Elton wasn't expecting it. Oh, and an uppercut. And it sends Sokoa through the table that time. 
And he's back to the match. Oh, Rollins with the forearm. Rollins getting all fired up now. Now looking for that knee drop to Jimmy Uso. Getting to the top rope now. Uh, Rollins now looking for that Phoenix splash. What height. Going for the cover now. Two. Kick out by Jimmy Uso. But that was pretty close to a three there. Rollins knew it. Jimmy knew it, Paul knew it, Cone knew it, we knew it, I knew it, you knew it, what, however many other people. That made pretty deadly funny dispatch for Solo to go now, maybe watching at ringside, making sure no other funny, funny business. Maybe they might want to sit on Sokoa. Anyways, Jimmy with the headbutt now. Jimmy looking to go to the top row. What's he looking for here? I think he's looking to another rolling. Sent on to Seth Rollins, this time on the midsection. Rollins feeling that too. Jimmy, oh no, super kick coward. Oh no, Jimmy goes for the roll up. Oh, and Seth Rollins just like how Seth beat Roman. Oh no, Rollins kicks out and he's pulling it over now. Looking for a two. Three, Rollins is being Jimmy just like he beat Roman with a roll up. Seth Rollins <laughs> wins tonight's main event. Against Jimmy Uso. Jeez, this main event's been crazy. Just stuff happening. Just that quick snap back and three seconds in. It's all over. Jimmy Boy was smart, clever there and got that win. Rollins turned it back on him. And now Rollins standing tall again. That's not going to please Roman Reigns. That's for sure. There's Roman Reigns probably looking for some kind of title match at some point with Seth Rollins. But for now... Rollins with the last laugh for this episode of SmackDown, at least by the looks of it. I don't see anybody else coming out. No more shenanigans. I think Teddy Long's c control of his show now. But anyways, thanks for watching SmackDown, everybody. And I hope you have a good night.